Hi guys, welcome to Cooking with Dimitri. Today we are actually going to be cooking brown sugar glazed salmon. So if I keep looking over to the side, it's because I'm looking at the ingredient. We're starting off this video with the ingredients needed for this recipe. So we actually need salmon, obviously, salt, pepper, brown sugar, Dijon, mustard, reduced sodium soy sauce, and rice vinegar. So that's going to be for the main course meal. And then for the side dish, we are going to be making garlic mashed potatoes. For this, you're going to need six garlic cloves, or you can actually use garlic powder like I do in this recipe. We're gonna need olive oil, fresh rosemary, which I'm going to be substituting the rosemary with parsley. You're gonna need potatoes, unsalted butter, milk, or in my case, almond milk, salt, black pepper. So now that we have all of our ingredients together, let's begin with the recipe. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is preheat the oven to 425. Okay, so now we're going to be making garlic mashed potatoes. All we have to do is have one big saucepan and cover these potatoes that we're going to be putting in here by one inch. Okay, so before we do that, we have to read this and it does say wash before use. So we're gonna head over to the sink and wash this off. Now that we washed off these potatoes, what we're going to be doing is filling this bowl with clean drinking water, which is this. And we have to make sure that this is covered by at least one inch. Okay, the finishing result will look like this. The potatoes are covered by at least one inch. Okay, now we're going to be bringing it over to the boiling section of our oven and turning it on high and get tender. So this is gonna take about 20 minutes to do. So I wish this took 20 minutes to do. It really didn't. It actually took 30 more additional minutes to boil the potatoes. So to make sure that they are all nice and, you know, actually cooked, just make sure that you are boiling the potatoes for 50 minutes. So while we are waiting for the oven to preheat, we're going to be cutting our salmon into four portions, finding one pound of salmon. Okay, so we need to measure out one pound of salmon. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to be using this household scale that we have conveniently located right here. What we're going to be doing is turning it on. It's gonna say hello. All we have to do is put this right on top and it's gonna show exactly how many ounces this bowl weighs. Now this is 11, it doesn't matter. Hit the T button. And now the scale is now adjusted for this bowl. Now all we have to do is find our salmon and open that bad boy right up. Okay, so we're going to need to make this thing weigh 16 ounces, which is one pound of salmon. As you will see, this salmon only weighs 5.26 ounces. That's what this recipe calls for. So that's what we're going to be going ahead and doing. Okay, and this last package right here is going to make it the 16 ounces or close enough to it. Yep, 15, oh, 16, see, one pound of salmon. Okay, now don't forget to wash your hands. Now that we measured exactly one pound of salmon, we're going to be putting it into this plate and cutting it into four portions. Or we could just cut it in littler, more little pieces. So me specifically, I do not like the, the gills over here. I don't really like these, so I'm cutting it right out of the salmon immediately. We're just gonna keep the gills on here. Honestly, we're just gonna cut the fish because of the fact that this is taking way too long to get off. Like I said before, do not forget to wash your hands many, many times while touching raw fish. It is very, very important to be washing your hands every single time you touch raw anything, chicken, steak, or fish. Okay, so our next step is to put salt and pepper on this fish. Now, typically I don't like to put a lot of salt on things, because I don't like things that salty. Because salmon carries such a strong flavor, it can require nothing more than just salt and pepper. The next step, we're gonna move that out of the way and we're going to bring in this pan. What we're going to be lining this pan with is aluminum foil. Okay, so how to line a pan with aluminum foil, it's very, very easy. Just take this, stretch this the whole entire length of the pan and then cut it right over here. Okay, and we will be placing our salmon inside of here. Once you put that in the pan, do not forget to wash your hands. Okay, so right after that, we're going to be placing this in the oven at 425 degrees for 10 minutes. Okay, and we are supposed to leave that inside of the oven for 10 minutes. 10 minutes later. Okay, so the timer just went off for the fish inside of the oven. 
So what we're going to be doing is bringing the fish from the oven with obviously this. Okay, so we're gonna be putting that on the back burner for now, quite literally. Okay, so for the brown sugar glaze, we're going to start off with one fourth teaspoon of salt. Okay, one fourth teaspoon. One fourth teaspoon of pepper. The next ingredient that we're going to need is three tablespoons of brown sugar. One, two, and three. Next, we're gonna be using three teaspoons of Dijon mustard. One, two, three, and four. One tablespoon of reduced sodium soy sauce. So since I only have one teaspoon, I'm gonna to need to wash this off, wash the Dijon mustard off of this teaspoon. Okay, so one teaspoon of rice vinegar. Okay, we're gonna mix this together. They want us to bring these ingredients that are in this pan just to a boil. Okay, so that's actually looking really, really good right now. Oh, that actually tastes really good. But I'm gonna just leave that to boil. Okay, so I see little parts that this, that could need some more mixing. So I'm not gonna just ignore them. I'm gonna mix it around a little bit more. And again, never leave this stuff unattended because you don't know if you're gonna burn it. You don't know if anything's gonna happen. Okay, so it's starting to boil now. I'm just gonna leave it a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna shut this side off. Okay, now that this is boiled, I'm gonna take this off the heat. So what I have here is something that we call a food brush. So what I'm going to be doing is moving this over just a bit so you can see the whole picture. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is taking this, condensing it a little bit, but see how we have all of this nice and creamy and goodness? We're gonna be taking this with the fruit brush and just seasoning the fish really well. Okay, and we're going to be using the rest of it. I think what it's gonna come down to is I'm going to wish that I made more of this. Okay, and don't forget to get any nooks and crannies of this fish. Okay, so now what they tell us to do is change our, our oven to boil. What we're gonna be doing is going on our oven over here and selecting the broil on high. They want us to be six inches away from the oven. So what I'm gonna be doing is this. Okay, and they say to have that on for one to two minutes, which I like my fish a little bit more well done. So we're gonna be putting on a two minute timer. While the two minute timer is going on, we have one look at our potatoes over here, and these potatoes are do actually doing really, really well. If we did wanna check up on that time that we have left for the potatoes, we have two minutes and 51 seconds. Or I thought. Well, this was before I realized the fact that the potatoes actually needed 30 more minutes. So add 30 minutes to those two minutes. So 32 minutes left. Okay, and the timer just went off. We're going to be picking up the fish from the oven. It is very, very important that everybody pays attention to when they put stuff inside of the oven. Very, very important so you do not burn anything. That broil was very, very hot. Just so you know, broils do get very, very, very hot. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is turning this setting off on the oven. Cancel this, bring this more to the front, and we will see that if you flake this with, it is a little flaky. So now, Safety first, we're going to be cutting into this and seeing if it is raw. It does not look raw to me. So we're gonna be taste testing it like we always do on this channel. Oh, actually, the potatoes are done. So we're going to be turning the heat off of the potatoes because they are done boiling. We can sh shut that off. Okay, so now we're going to be taste testing the fish. Too many things going on. So we do have a little bit of the fish right here. And that's actually a very, very interesting flavor. Oh yeah, I should have made, see, I, I already called it. I already called it. I should have made some more of the sauce <laughs> so I can pour it right on top. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. I love it. Just before the potatoes are ready in a small saucepan over low heat, combine the butter and milk and heat until the butter is melted and the mixture is hot. Four tablespoons of unsalted butter, one half cup of milk. Okay, we're gonna be bringing this over to here and pouring this in. We also need to make sure, very, very important, that this is actually on low heat. And then we, they want us to do this until the butter is melted.
So the, since this is on low heat, I'm going to be continuing to mix this because of the fact that this does take a little bit while longer. Let's go back to our potatoes that are over here. Okay, let's move this and this out of the way. To save your guys' time, I'm just gonna fast forward all of this clip because of this is the time that I actually realized that the potatoes were raw. So I had to put them on the stove for an additional 30 minutes. So because of the fact that I used a little bit different potatoes than what the recipe called for, that changes everything else. So we're gonna be putting this back on the heat. I'll come right back to you guys after it's done. Okay, so now the timer is going off. 30 minutes later, it is finally done. Wow, let me shut this off now. Okay, so now that we have a bowl here, we can start making the garlic mashed potatoes. I think it'll be easier just to take the potatoes. So now that I just tested the potatoes, oh yeah, these are already a night and day difference. Look at that. That's a night and day difference in what it was. Okay, so now let's get right into the, oh, look at that. We're going to be bringing in this, our butter and milk. Okay, and giving this a little bit of a mix. And so this has no flavor town right now, but that's just because we didn't add any flavor to this. So what they want us to do is add six garlic cloves, which we're going to not be using cloves, but we're going to actually be using garlic. I like a lot of garlic on my stuff, so I'm gonna be using one and a half teaspoons of garlic. And within each thing we're going to be putting in, each spice that we're gonna be putting in, we're going to also be mixing. Now that we're done putting that, we're gonna be doing two, two tablespoons of olive oil, which is close enough to the butter, so we don't really need to clean this. That's one, that's two. So we're gonna be using freshly ground black pepper. Okay, now we're going to be mixing this and seeing what we need to add after this. Honestly, the key to having really good mashed potatoes is the seasoning. Yeah, no, this needs some more seasoning. What we're going to be adding, that which is not in the ingredients, is parsley, because I really like the parsley. We're also going to be adding some more garlic. We're gonna be adding one more teaspoon, and we're also going to be adding a little bit more salt for taste and some more black pepper. I do like stuff spiced up. Stuff does not taste good if it's not spiced up. I wanna smell the spice in this thing. Still not enough spices. Put some more parsley. This is why you need to taste it while you're cooking. Put a little bit more parsley. Put two more, a pinch of pepper for taste and a little bit more salt for taste, okay? Mixing that together. We do have a lot of potatoes in here. We do have three whole potatoes inside of this recipe. When you mix this, you do wanna smell the flavor town that's inside of these potatoes. Mm. Chef's kiss. Okay. You added a lot of spices to this thing and it's well deserved because this came out bussin'. Honestly, because I am a cuckoo, this can use a little bit more garlic and a little bit more pepper, but right here is fine. But if you wanna go cuckoo with the flavor town, like what I'm doing, go right ahead, okay? And that's exactly what it needed. Okay, now we're going to be getting a plate so we can plate this thing and start eating it. Okay, so now that we have the fish and we have the potatoes on the side. This is the final result right here. We're going to be doing a little taste test right now. That's bussin. And that's bussin. Boom. Two hours later, we finally finished. I'm so excited. I'm very excited. Thank you all for joining me. I do really recommend, I forgot to put it on the apron guys. I forgot to put it on the apron. I'm going cuckoo. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed this journey because this was a long journey. I'm glad that everything turned out really good because I know how to put flavor town into the stuff that I make, okay? The seasonings, the spices are the key, okay? Never under season your stuff. Never under season potatoes. Don't under season your fish, okay? Don't under season anything. You want flavor town in every single bite you have and you want to spread the love around. Okay, spread the love. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for enjoying. And I really hope that you took something from this video and actually tried it yourself. This is the best part of the video, actually having you guys try it out. If you do try out this recipe and you do enjoy it, please take a picture of what you made and tag me in it. Arujo underscore Demetrius right on Instagram. And let me see what you guys made. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you all for enjoying. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day because I, cannot stop eating this like always. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great rest of your day.